I'm just like fading in and out of reality. Is this Everybody's gonna tune into this life? now. Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. It's King Game Anime. How's everyone doing? Um, I feel like I'm doing better than some other people. <laughs> Just a sneaking suspicion. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I mean, I think we all look pretty normal. We got to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm out here, apparently, uh, according to a, a previous comment, uh, beating the whites. Uh, what, what, what was it? Sure. What were you EA again? Rasta man? I, I, I was a Rasta white, man. I was Rasta man. Someone was a white beater. <laughs> and someone was a, a, a VTuber. Yeah. Specifically yeah. a white beater. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the King of Anime Podcast, where every week we uh, talk about the animus. And today, uh, we don't got a lot to talk about, actually. This may be one of our first shows in forever where we're not going to waste your time for a billion days. Uh, we just got Shinseki Yori and Free Run to talk about. That's yeah, basically it. We, we killed a lot of shows this year. A uh, season. We killed well, a lot of shows. This year is accurate. <laughs> True, I guess this year and season. Years yeah. not over yet. I think we're going to have a lot more luck with the spring season, though. It's mm. it's a lot that. So even if we were to drop some stuff in the spring season, it's one of those things to where if if we miss, we still can't miss because it's just that many good shows coming out. Well, I'm gonna lie. I call in. dib. I call dibs on Konosuba. All mine. <laughs> I'm all yours. I'm going to lock in in another world with my wheel wheelbarrow. Uh, <laughs> is that oh, an anime? It is now. Uh, Did you make it up? We uh, can't tell. Yes, yes. But the thing is, is it's probably real already, and I guarantee you, he probably fucks the wheelbarrow. As it should. Which which reminds me, did you guys see the the Oshinoko stuff? I don't is even there, think we should talk about. That. Is there wheelbarrow <laughs> fucking in that? Uh, I, I mean, if it was, it would be better. Can I can I be in the wheelbarrow or something? I brought this. That up. was my first time fucking a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> I regret this podcast. I've messed up the the entire. I've messed up. It's bad. Uh, QRW6 says, what up, KOA? Guess y'all killed fucking emotes in the way. It's always in the way, goddammit. What, what? Can't even, I don't even know what, what he's, what he's it saying. Just said, killed winter 2024 okay. anime. For me, it said, guess y'all killed win 2024 anime. I'm like, what the fuck does it that says, mean? It says, y'all are bad people and you should feel bad. <laughs> yeah. That's the gist of it. Yeah. We do. We already do. It's 2024. What else is new? Um... But yeah, how has uh, your guys' week been? Pretty good. I I was telling you, see, but I'll tell everyone else. Uh, went to the Renaissance Fair this past Saturday. It was Celtic weekend because Sunday was St. Patrick's Day. So everyone was Irish. Everyone was drinking. I got to see people cracking whips, doing fire tricks, doing... Uh, hula dances and all kinds of really cool stuff and I uh, got to eat a turkey leg and you know what I say you can't go wrong with a turkey leg it was delicious and fantastic man I gotta see if all there's right. like events like that where I live I never even thought about that for a second the Ren Fair every, go every year I live in Florida so you'll just probably see it outside <laughs> it won't be organized, but you'll probably see some midi midi medieval shit. People oh, look! Somebody is. Armor. Just someone's <laughs> fully walking out in armor. It's like, 
Is there an event going on? No, he's just wearing a full-on outfit. Just walking around, just... <laughs> I am the Black Swordsman! Just go go I downtown. Monster. Go downtown <laughs> after twelve, and you'll you're bound to see something Renaissance related. Oh my god, <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. Well, QRW six has been uh, watching uh, Outlaw Star, uh, and he says he really Classic. really is really enjoying it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that in a couple of years, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very been a good. Long time for me. It'd be nice if that series actually got a remake. I think that's one of the few series that's like from the 90s and that space western era where it just, for whatever reason, didn't age as well. That is charm. Definitely, definitely. I think it'd be awesome <laughs> if they'd read it now. I don't know if it'd have an audience now, but it'd be nice. Hey, if they can do it with uh, Trigun, they can do it with Outlaw. Hey, oh, yeah. Neon. Hello, Neon. I don't think I've ever seen him pop into here. Yeah, Neon Victor Evangelion. He's here. Neon, give me your arm. Give it. What is good, Neon? Neon, give me your arm. Hello, King of Anime Podcast. Hope your day is doing good. Uh, Yui Zayft. Zayft? Zayft. Said Guts the Florida Man. <laughs> He's just walking around. Oh. <laughs> it's he's like crying. He just he's just singing the theme song, walking around with a giant fucking blaze. Like this man's a danger to himself and society. Take him out. <laughs> Put your grasses on. Nothing will be wrong. When are we gonna do uh, I, KOA covers? I mean, oh. that technically was a cover. When are we gonna do a full album? A full twelve album EP. LP, sorry. We got to get exploited by some, uh, by some record label first. <laughs> or, or, if we start getting super chats on this channel, we have to set a limit for this amount. You'll get a free song. <laughs> well, not free, but you got to pay for it. A <laughs> hundred thousand dollars, and we'll produce a cover album professionally. Oh, that, that's that's a steal. Go. That that's a bargain. Mm-hmm. We'll, even, we'll, even, we'll even get Snoop Dogg in on a feature. He probably would do that if we had the money. Oh my <laughs> we'll, god, we'll, he 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 sells for every he shields for everything. I swear. We'll do the free. Hey yo, I got he'll, blue he'll chew. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with my dick, but you can have it. <laughs> him, him and Shaq are just everywhere, so oh, I would not be Shaq. surprised if they did that. I see hot fucking the general. Uh, Papa John's. Papa John's. You got the shakaroni? It's for you. It's oh, everywhere. Man. We gotta get him. I think we can do it. I know Shaq can sing and play music. Uh, Apparently a really good musician. I mean, he's a DJ. Yeah, he so. was supposed to go to the event that I was doing dodgeball at. And I was supposed to... F True story. We were supposed to play dodgeball with fucking Shaq. Oh, wow. <laughs> but then he canceled on it, so then we ended up playing dodgeball with some group. I can't remember their name. I apologize, you really great people. But I can't remember their name. They both had, like, bucket hats, and they wore the same outfit, and that was their look and everything. But <laughs> play dodgeball against them. You, you, it was fun. Instead of playing with Shaq, they brought in Buckethead. <laughs> <laughs> chum, chum bucket heads. I like that would have been something to tell my children. You know, it's like I got to play dodgeball with Shaq at an EDM concert. <laughs> that that would have been something. But can't now imagine you have to tell him dodgeball. you got buckethead. I I can't either. But he he seems like a guy that would try something at least once just to say that he did it. You know what I mean? Because. I fit, he had like a, a reality TV show for a while where he was like doing all kinds of stuff. He did some like MMA training uh, and just, just to see if he could like do it. This big seven foot guy just doing the ground and pound stuff. It was really fun to watch, but would have been fun I, to see him do dodgeball with the fucking a, giant hands. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He has such big hands. I mean, I feel like it's nothing you could really do, but hope, hopefully get his legs. Right, exactly. But, I mean, we were told, all right, when you play, 
just go easy on them. Don't, don't. And I'm like, okay, sure, sure. And then that's what I would do. I would just be like, Shaq, catch me with your giant hand. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) No problem, EA. (laughs) He calls me EA. Ah, man. It would have been fun, but uh, he, he had to cancel and he had to go somewhere else. Something was happening that week. I don't know. Because I was. Rich people go. Yeah. Probably with Tom Cruise to. And his Scientology. Probably to. To go to a those slave. fucking. <laughs> to go to those fucking uh, masquerade ball parties or whatever they're called <laughs> from Eyes Wide Shut. <laughs> Even though you could, you know who they are. That that would that would be the funniest part. They have such distinguished just outfits in general and, and demeanors that <laughs> there's just no point. But they do it anyways. They pretend they don't know each other, but it's clearly that person. Yeah, it's like that's Shaq. Uh, that's Tom Cruise. <laughs> Barbara Streisand. That's that's Barbara Streisand. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We talk about anime anymore. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's talk. Let's talk about the bureaucracy. Yeah. Let's talk about China. <laughs> talk about China let's and turn, Taiwan. Let's turn to a political show. Palestine <laughs> and Israel. Do it. How do you guys feel about minorities? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what are your guys' thoughts on I love everybody. females? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I went. S- not to get on a huge tangent or anything, but I watched this guy. I'm subscribed to him. His name is Gokunaro. Definitely subscribe to him if you haven't. Anyone listening to this, he did a deep dive into this one dude. Never heard of him in my life, but I sure did learn about these red pilling uh, alpha Chad dudes that Andrew get Tate. women. And Andrew Tate is a big one. And I'm because I know you guys were telling me about it, and I learned a little bit about it, but I learned mm-hmm. a lot. <laughs> about watching this video and I'm just like I can't believe these fucking people watch this guy and are like brainwashed and are just like I want to do what this guy does it's insane I don't want to get too deep into it we could talk about it after the podcast but it's, it's a <laughs> lot it's it's a lot of preying on lonely men is is it's as simple as that but that never get yeah me. that's what it looks like to me but uh yeah, I used, to, I used um, to be friends with one of those one of those guys. You were friends with Andrew Tate? How no, is he? No, it's not Andrew guy? Tate. Uh, I don't want to say the name because they're sort of still around. You guys, I think. Oh no, I get it. I get it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not a nice oh. person. Not a nice person. Oh, I, I, you know what? I think I know who you're referring yeah. to. I gotcha. Yeah. Um. Anyways, let's go ahead and let's get into the anime news. We got stuff here to never, ever, ever, ever give you the blues. Now let's get ready for the KO wave. It's Miracle! <laughs> so cute. What the fuck? Um, really, we just have to one Sasuke thing. the Savage. Good editing. Good production. <laughs> Maybe we don't need Shaq after all. Oh, uh, no. Not at all. I just found this interesting. We had this morning just a bevy of, of announcements for anime that have already been announced, but specifically Spice and Wolf, Unnamed Memory, and uh, <sighs> Go Go Loser Ranger are uh, both getting two cores. Uh, uh, I hate that name. It's, it's, I, still, I still don't <laughs> like it. It irks me deeply. It's Ranger Reject. Come on. But it's, they they messed up the alliteration. You got quintessential quintuplets, Ranger Reject, and probably something else down the line when he makes another series. Yeah, you got tenacious, it. tenacious Teletubbies, tenacious titties. <laughs> that too. That uh, but yeah, Spice and Wolf two cores, uh, Ranger Reject two cores. I, I looked a little bit at the unnamed memory. It doesn't really look that great or interesting for me. But uh, two cores still. Um, this is really weird. What's happening? Is everything okay? Look at that. Sasuke's got Ooh. himself a little, uh, little, uh, little hollow there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That I, I am surprised about Spice and Wolf getting two cores, just because even the original anime had 
It was two seasons, two yeah. wars. So we're gonna what, what, like everything one have a twelve covered. and one have a thirteen episode. So that's kind of crazy. I mean, so it could reach where the anime ended at. The original may, anime ended. At. I think it may go a little bit past it. I mean, it's isn't possible. There, isn't there a little bit of stuff like after? It's been a while since I read this, but isn't there a little bit of stuff well, like they could do? They they skip some stuff in the anime. Uh, oh, that's now, right. I don't they know, do. I don't know how f- accurate they're going to make it to the light novel, but they could flesh it out a lot more. So it may end up being, uh, it may seem a lot more. Um, it may not seem as condensed, but that's if they flesh out things uh, that happened in the light novel that wasn't in the that wasn't in the anime. You know how the whole light novel to anime thing works a lot of times. You know, manga, it's a little easier, I feel, but light novels are really tough because it's so much in their uh, uh, monologues and whatnot, and it just doesn't look as great sometimes uh, going from light novel to anime, but we'll see. I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. Excited for Ranger Reject, too. The fact that it's going to be two cores is... I mean... That's awesome. And it's going to be... I don't know if these are going to be uninterrupted cores. They didn't, they didn't specify that. But if it's... If I'm all these sure. series are getting uninterrupted two cores, I mean... That's, that's, just, that's just amazing. It's incredible. Especially with Ranger Reject because... You know, there's... How, like, how much... I don't think there would be enough for a season two currently. Um, if they cover two mm, cores. They're pretty far. Ra- really? A Ranger Reject is I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I want to it's it's past the hundreds. So like if we if we did it like this, because usually for like one core, it's four volumes usually, like a volume for every three episodes. So in a in a shown in weekly format, which that's kind of what Ranger Reject is in. Uh, two cores would be about like 80 chapters or so. So, it, I think it, or you said season two. Uh, yeah, if, if the season two is also two cores, that's where I was kind of approaching it from. Oh, well, yeah, 80, 80, 80, 80 chapters is enough. 80 chapters is enough. Yeah, and yeah. it's past that. Super exciting. Uh, it's also crazy that uh, Metallic Rouge. Is a series we've been saying needs more cores, and uh, it missed it, missed the boat. <laughs> yeah, it, it it came out the wrong season. If it would have waited till spring, it would have been graciously adapted into two core. Heck, maybe even just straight through twenty four episodes because it needed it for sure. Now, let me tell you, I watched the newest episode, episode ten. It was really funny. It was a really funny episode, like. Laugh out loud, hilarious, but wow, wow, dude, it, it's getting pretty bad, <laughs> pretty oh. bad. I um, was wondering what that wow meant, but bad, huh? Mm, that's a shame. Yep, yep. Um, Kiro W six says the high value trope is for the ten percent of the population. Live your lives, dudes. Don't fall for the trap. Uh. Yeah. Uh, all, don't, also, don't play also, games. also, women aren't Pokemon. You can't generalize. No. And say broad statements that apply to every woman. That, yeah. that doesn't work. Right, and you can't just be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I have, I have multiple girlfriends." Yeah, and we we totally talked about. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we totally talked about having being a polygamy. Yeah. No. And also uh, realize you're traumatizing women. So stop. And yeah. men, both. You're just traumatizing people, so please stop. Yeah, it's it's no good. But it was it was a very well done video. But it was just very much something that I had no idea. I guess you could say I'm a person that doesn't spend his whole life online all the time. But when I do find out these things that involve certain, I don't know, like clicks or whatever, it's just like I didn't know this was a thing. I don't yeah. know. Like I said, I don't spend my whole time on here. I just kind of like to do dodgeball, watch anime, play games, and then go to bed. 
<laughs> Such is life. I like to cry into cups and, and hydrate myself that way. <laughs> I like what QRW sits in the chat. Q R is W hopefully next. When we were talking about qu- quintessential quintuplets, Ranger Reject. <laughs> I don't know. He might he might be cooking something up for you. I don't know. Um Whale Wife. <laughs> whale Wife? That's his <laughs> next work is Whale Wife. Oh my god, see. Well, no, wife. No, don't EA stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> don't open that uh, that that can of worms. I I will not that open that gate from Pandora's box for <laughs> sure. And QRW six, thank you. I thank you for calling me a real man. I. Have a beard. I don't know if that is a prerequisite in order <laughs> being a man, but it just kind of like comes with the package. Oh, no, no, no. Sasuke, you said it was okay. I, remember, I gave you a consensual hug about it. And oh, see, Tactics yeah. kissed you without consent. Wait, did, in that video, <laughs> didn't I, did I, did I reject, your, <laughs> reject your hug? Yeah, you did. I was like, bring it in. You're like, no, I'm fine. Get your hands off me. <laughs> And that's when C was like, you didn't say anything about my hands. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so I listened and C uh, took advantage. Listen, you better watch out. I don't like out. the sound of that. <laughs> you better watch out because I'm taking advantage. Any, any advantage I see, I'm taking it. Hide your, hide your kids, hide your wife. And hide your husband because they rap not about out here. <laughs> Uh, well, that's besides the news. I guess we should go ahead and get into Sekai Yori, uh, episodes 19 and 20. Dude. I want to say quickly, I think next go around, we're going to watch three episodes because I don't want to do three weeks of this again. So like three episodes next week and then two episodes to finish it off. I think okay. that'll, that'll be good. That'll... Yeah, I think that'll end perfectly because next week will be the last. That'll be the last of episode of Fryerin, and then uh, after that, we could just yeah talk about the show, and then yeah, that'll be that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. um, war. But dude, freaking these uh these queer rats don't play around. <laughs> freaking. They're just starting all kinds of shit and just getting. They're, they're just like somebody opens some kind of box and they're ready to kill every human. They don't care if they're gods. They're like, hey, you don't scare me anymore. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> God. Uh, some of the some of the voice acting for some of the this the random people in this episode was so funny. Some of the lines they said. Like that one guy who had all the hubris to just go immediately to the building. He was like, "Yeah, what do you think I am? Stupid?" God, yeah, that guy's a fucking idiot. Ten, ten minutes later, he's dead. Yeah, he gets evaporated. Or guys, like what that. the hell? You guys are a bunch of, of pansies. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna totally murder. A, oh, what is that? Oh! <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, though. You know, uh, don't worry, I, he I didn't would... suffer. I would usually get on up people for for portraying these bad tropes of someone just being super overconfident. But considering their status as gods to to these queer rats, it makes a lot of sense why they're so overconfident and how they just dismiss them as any type of military power because they're thinking we we can crush a whole colony of these dude colony of these dudes. We'll probably just. Ten farmers. It's it's really nothing. It's not anything to us. But they're so well prepared, and they seemingly have some secret weapon on their side, which got a little more clear to us. We still didn't get to see the person's face, but now we kind of see what we're working with. I already know who it is. It's like not even a secret. I think it's Maria? Yeah. 100%. It's 100% Maria. I only say that because 
Who else could it be? That little I mean, bitch, Mamoru? <laughs> <laughs> it could cock? be Mamoru. They could be mistaking him for a girl because I did that the first time when I was watching the series. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously thought that he was a girl, but it was the voice. He became a but then when he, Yeah, he really did. He loves uh, <clears throat> cats and stuff, cat boys. But uh, it's, it's one of two people because they, uh, and when I say they, the, the, the people that took care of all the, the, the children and stuff, they made sure that all of them were eradicated and dead. Who didn't die? Maria and Mamaru. So it's Maria. It, unless... It's just some random person. It's like, do you remember me from the first episode where I was taken out? <laughs> it's Rio. Hey what? guys, I'm just trying to be friends. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's a Is Shin still better? Is Shun still better than me? It should have been <laughs> me. That would actually be kind of funny and a little bit of a twist where it's like, okay, I didn't see that one coming, but at least. There's kind of some significance there. Like, he just gets so pissed off to where it he's just so insane. jealous. Drives him insane. He becomes a fiend. I, like, that would, I'd be like, okay, but something tells me it's not going to be that. It's going to be Maria. Again, I, I, I only say that just because who else could it be? If it's just some random girl from the village to the left of main character, then that doesn't serve any purpose to me. But. I mean, it could be for all I know, but I, I think it's Maria. Well, yeah. my only question to that would be then, what do you think happened with the whole thing of the bones being presented to them? Because they went as far as to say, it's not just that the bones looked like Maria's uh, bone, Maria's and Mamaru's bones. It was literally their DNA. They tested it that far. So it wasn't like a one glance thing where it's like, oh, they, eh, it looks right, I guess. They checked it's it. It's like a bone. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was said just to kind of like throw them off, so to speak. And what I mean by that is to kind of like cover up the fact that the, but. But why would they do that? You know, if they, they didn't want this to happen in the first place, why would they have just lie just to have a fiend come back and just kill the whole village? Unless that's what they fucking wanted. You know? Well, <laughs> that's well, it's significant that it can't the information came from Tomiko because we know of her encounter with a fiend and how much she didn't she wanted to prevent this very situation so right i think it's safe to say that she, there wasn't any co conspiracy with her and squealer or whoever this person is that's killing everybody yeah i don't know i don't know it's definitely gonna all come to a head here pretty soon but my my gut tells me maria and it's because she just, she wants, she wants the clam. Damn. Damn, she wants the clam. <laughs> she, she saw Saki as a grown up and went insane because well, she was so beautiful. Yeah. Well, okay, so how about this? Because if, okay, if it is Maria, do you think Maria is in control of her powers currently? Because uh, the, the difference between a fiend and a karma demon is a fiend is a fiend ha already has those violent tendencies within them. <clears throat> Whereas a karma demon, most of the times they're kind individuals like we've seen with Shun and their powers just unconsciously go out of whack. So if we're dealing with a fiend, do you think that she just lost control? Because she's I mean, Saki and Satsuro in the crossfire right now of all of mm -hmm. this. And yeah. you would think if it was Maria that she wouldn't put them in danger. Unless she has reason to. Like, I don't know. 
some people hold grudges. I don't know what kind of grudge this particular character would be holding because it seemed like she, you know, never got, never didn't get along with anybody. She was just totally fine. But unless there was just some secret thing that happened to her when she was younger, Satoru stepped on my foot (laughs) when I was five. I never forgave him for that because he didn't even apologize. He just said, and ran away. (laughs) Just something something like that. But I don't know what she would be resenting or anything like that because you're right. Like that would be something that would manifest, but she never gave me that impression unless it was all just fake on the surface. Well, what, what if, because Saki and Satoru are still in this society, right? And they chose to leave. What if Maria and Mamaru, what if something happened to Mamaru? If it's Maria in this case, uh-huh. and let's say he, he, he died of, 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 Bitchness. Dysentery. <laughs> that too. <laughs> he died of dysentery and she got, she was just so angry, maybe that Saki and Satoru are still in this society and feels like maybe, maybe she wants to save them or something like that or like free them from it. Uh, maybe because she yeah. was manipulated by the queer rats at some point. I, I could see something like that because. Remember when they left, uh, Maria was just kind of left with a bad taste in her mouth. She's like, why are the grownups doing this? Why do they want to kill us? Why, why, why? I love the stark contrast when Saki said, now I understand why the grownups were so adamant to try to control that, which was so beautifully well done. (laughs) I, I... because I, I think I mentioned that earlier on where it's like, as a kid, uh, when you're younger, you're going to be like, this is unfair. But as an adult, you understand, okay, now I get it. You know, it's like, it's like when you're a kid and you have to eat your vegetables. Why the fuck do I have to eat vegetables? This is so gross. I hate this shit. Yeah. But then when yeah. you get older, you realize my parents weren't being mean. They wanted me to be healthy. God damn it. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's a stark contrast. And I'm thinking, Maria's still in that mindset of, oh, all of them are being controlled. Oh, I'm just so upset. Why is this? So I think you're, right. you're on to something, see, when it comes to that. I think maybe Maria is, like, bitter that, there's, that both Saki and Satu are in the society and that maybe her jealousy got to her or maybe she's doing this to get her, uh, I don't know, to, to get Saki and Satru with them. I don't know. There's a lot of unknowns, but my thing is it's, it has to be Maria. I cannot imagine it being anyone else. Well, as well, uh, here's another interesting fact, and I don't, I don't know if, if, if I maybe am misremembering this or not, but the guy that, the, the, when they went into the hospital, the guy was like, oh, we got to get out of here. You know what this is. You, know, you were taught this. They were, and uh, he was like one of the hostages. But the mm-hmm. fact is, it gathered hostages to use as leverage to get something. If this thing is crazy, right, why would it get hostages? Why would it gather up people and wrap them up? See, there's, there's just a lot of stuff that's just omitted right now. We just don't know. And I think that's what's... Uh, it's a lot of speculation right now. It's a lot of just, oh, what's happening? Oh, golly gee. Neon right now is listening to this podcast, and he's just giggling. Because Neon, Neon was watching this in the server with us, and he loved the mm-hmm. show so much, he, he went and watched the entire thing. So he's giggling. Mm. Wow. Yeah. He, he just giggled the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he fucking I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any One Piece laughs. Oh, there, there's a lot. There's is there one where it's the she 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 she? 
there's one that's close to that. It's like it's like that. It is annoying as hell. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to say was I find it interesting that we didn't see Swiller in none of these episodes, but his impact was still present because of the just the 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 military strategy that we've seen that we kind of had to attribute to him because we know that he's the leader of the robber fly colony and Satsuru uh, throughout this episode is theorizing what exactly is going on and uh, what is his, what exactly is the plan and they have a couple of different things that they th- do throughout these two episodes that are just kind of brilliant and it's, it's morbid to say that because a lot of humans are dying because of it but I mean this is brilliant considering how far the or how big the gap is uh, in power between humans and and queer rats now their intelligence is up there with humans i know they don't they they're not they're some of them aren't capable of um of like you know speaking i, I can't say english in this uh, uh, speaking their language yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking their language uh but they're still intelligent and they don't really get credit for that but uh there there's the there's the plan where uh, it didn't work, of course, but they they blow a hole in a hospital and they lie in wait in the grass and try to wait for the, all the Kantai users to go out in the open so they could just blast them with arrows. Now, Satoru and Saki are pretty smart themselves. Yeah. Really, I want to say Satoru because Satoru was taking control uh, throughout yeah. all these episodes. He was yeah, he, pretty much a military general. He He really was. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, this, I mean... He, he was kind of like that when he was younger, too. Very wet behind the ears and inexperienced. But now that he's lived longer now and he's like in his mid 20s, he's just like, I could see him as that, as you say, like a general, just like, there's something in these bushes. All right, yeah. flink that way, go that way. He will make a good leader if I hope he's alive. <laughs> I didn't see him die. So <laughs> he has to be alive somehow. Yeah. But, um, you know, they had that line and weight trap. Uh, then they had the mysterious Kantai user just patrol the hospital and hunt down anybody in the vicinity. And I think it's safe to say that nobody really made it alive out out of the hospital except for Satoru and Saki. And yeah. then they almost died because they because <laughs> the the Kantai user is following them on the boat. It is it is insane how thorough this plan is. Yeah. Oh, I also yeah. I also remember another thing. About the hostages. They were drugged. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were. Yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 uh, there's some teamwork going on with these fucking rats and this Kanta user and maybe a third person. I don't know. It's just... I want to know what's going to happen. <laughs> Some weird stuff going on. Um, what really these whole two episodes was just showing the the war and how everybody's res- responding to it. But uh, kind of to go further with the whole thing of some of the tactics we've seen, we saw these monsters in the water, which were were Satoru theorized that we don't know if, what the a- absolute truth is, but he theorized that they were bred by the queer rats for the whole purpose of surrounding villagers in this smog and just blowing the whole thing up, which yeah. that's what we saw happen to Saki and Satoru, which mm-hmm. split them up. Yeah, just 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 like the fucking uh, exploding dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's really crazy that these animals are literally just cool <laughs> with or or bred to just you know. To not just take their life, but everyone else's life with them. It's insane. Yeah. And, uh, but it was was something else I was going to say with that. That, that, oh, yeah. Uh, because he, uh, because they had this monster in the water that, you know, could release this smog and blow, uh, blow itself up, killing a whole bunch of people. Cause we saw one of the village. 
when, or we, when we went back to the village, we saw a whole bunch of buildings just gone. Uh, so yeah. we saw the aftermath of the explosion. And that forced them to drain all the water. So now they have no transportation to even lead the villages. This whole plan is so brilliant on so many different levels. Like he played on their ego. He played on the under un, underestimate un, underestimation. That's not, probably not a word. <laughs> but we'll um, say it is. Yeah, uh, for now it's a word. I, I just created a new word. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, he played on that because. I mean, he's been dealing with humans. Uh, he's been a squadron leader for a long time, so he knows how they see themselves. And I mean, they re- revert, uh, revere them as God. So he knew they were going to be underestimated. That's why he has these um, uh, these attacks at night because they're thinking, oh, you know, a bunch of queer wags will take them out easy. And it never ends up that way. And he's also doing a thing where he's doing the night attacks, and then the minute they feel some relief, he attacks them again. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty clever, pretty smart. He's he's definitely just toying with them at this point. He has them right where he wants them. Yeah. And the most terrifying about this whole te- the whole. The the thing that's most terrifying about this whole thing is what Satru said at the beginning of episode 19, which I think I said yes or last week, where I said, considering Sweeler's character, he doesn't seem like a person that would just take risk unnecessarily. He's someone that's going to make sure he's measured something twice and he's going to cut once. So the fact that he's going for this means that he feels that he has something in his pocket that is going to ensure his win. He's not going to take a battle. He doesn't believe he will end up losing. So however percentage you, he thinks he's going to win it 90, 10, it doesn't matter. He feels confident that he's going to win. And that's terrifying. Yeah. Cause that means there's plans on plans on plans. We haven't even seen. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this was something in the making for a long time. And I don't we don't know how long, but something tells me it, it was years. Years and years. So what do you think is the end goal with Sweeler in all of this? What what is he trying to achieve? The eradication of humans entirely? Uh I don't know. I mean Maybe something along those lines, but not quite to the point of full on extinction or genocide or anything like that. Something tells me that, and this is just me throwing it out there, it could very well not be it, but maybe something along the lines of, you know, you were gods once, now we're in charge. You know, you you humans kept us down for so long. Now you get to see how it feels. That's that's just my guess. Other than that, I don't really know what else it could possibly be other than control and power. Yeah, I think you're right, EA. And to kind of add on to that, like, I mean, what happens when you spend generations of your people that are supposed to revere these humans as gods and all the humans do or the Kantai users do really is use you for their own little purposes and, and, and not even occlude you in their society. And, and it's very, very clear that they take advantage of them. Right. So yeah. of course that would over time and over generations change the dynamic. And, you know, you spend you spend your entire time being ruled by a by a king that doesn't care about you. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to overthrow and you're going to take the throne for yourself to, you know, really do the same thing again, but you know, to try and bring some sort of you know, balance to things. Uh but I I think I think 
if you were gonna if you if you were gonna do this and let's say they have uh this out of control karmic demon or fiend or whatever on their their side in my opinion i think they plan to entirely wipe every one of them out if that is the case because i mean why why would you leave even one of them alive what what advantage does that bring you that's true they they can unless very... you convince them to be on their side and do their bidding. I don't know. <laughs> well, as we saw in episode nineteen, when they were being when they were going to ambush them, they were able to figure out, and all they had to do was burn the fields and then basically pop their heads. <laughs> that was it. Like they they have the only advantage they have against humans and Kantai users in general is their wits, their brains. That's it. That's all they can use. So, of course, why, why would you not eliminate them entirely um, and get them out of the picture so that you can free yourself from that? Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, I mean, too they... bad we don't have nuclear bombs. Well, there may still be some left. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, they might be cooking something up for all we know. It may be. Oh, we're gonna make. We're gonna be, make uh, the biggest dog balloon there is. They may be buying a lot of microwaves right now. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to think about. it. I mean, this is the future, so nukes are a thing of the past. So they could bring. They could full on bring that back if they wanted to. And it would work. That's still that's nukes. True. That's true. Nuclear radiation lasts a long time and never goes away. <laughs> well, it does go away after like, was it like ten thousand years or something? Something. something. I, I saw. I, I saw something recently about like if all of humanity was gone, the nuclear reactors would go off and it would stay on the in the world for like tens of thousands of years. Crazy. Fallout. <laughs> it is it is kind of insane how clean nuclear energy is and how um what was that one administration? Was it Reagan that was like nuclear energy is dangerous? Still dealing with that shit. Even though it's literally mm. clean. Yeah. <sighs> well, any nuclear radiation that happens here, it's going to be, like I said, through the balloon dog's asshole or something. The world on fire. It's like, what is that? That's a giant balloon dog. And look at that asshole. It's going to blow. <laughs> Just give me 10 minutes in a Taco Bell. <laughs> That's what the dog says. I haven't yeah. drank any water today. It's going to be extra bad. Oh, God, no. I see it over the horizon. <laughs> Jesus. We're done for. It's like, it's like that one scene in that, that one movie. Um, oh, fuck. It's the one where uh, the world ends or whatever, and they got to go into bunkers. <laughs> by the, it's that, like a natural disaster film. Down. There's like a lot of those that are made. Well, it's like, remember that one? Who's movie? in it? I, oh, God, I cannot remember for the life of me. It was oh, a very are you, popular I, one. I think I know what you're thinking of. Wait, oh no, it's not a popular one. I want to see, is that garbage one 2012? It's not 2012 or the day after tomorrow. It's, it's like an earlier one. Like from the n late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, maybe Armageddon? It's, maybe it's Armageddon? Where like... Deep uh, Impact? <laughs> it, it's, remember, there's like the big wave. There's like a big wave. And like for some reason, like some dad or for some guys decides to like stay and die... I think I know what you're talking about. I, I think you're mixing up your movies. I think that was another really bad movie, but it, they controlled the weather through like satellites and stuff. Anyway, I, I don't know, man. It's a shitty movie, <laughs> whatever it is. Yes. I thought you were then, talking about The Happening or something. No. What? No, that's another no. really bad movie. Hey, you guys like mustard <laughs> on your hot dogs? Hey, there was a kid here that died because of plants. 
God, what a piece of shit. Give me uh, a if anybody second. knows, if if anyone knows of the movie that C is referring to, please post it in chat or comments, depending on when. I mean, you're it may be Armageddon. It. Isn't it Armageddon? Like the meteor splits off. Oh, Carp says Deep Impact. Maybe that's what it is. Could be Deep Impact. I do remember that one too. But we'll we'll be here all night trying to think of this damn movie. Listen, so this is this is hurting me. <laughs> it's I am searching it up now. Oh God! Like I said, you're just gonna come up with all the basic ones, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, Tremors! Tremors had nothing to do it with it." Is it, it's Deep Impact? It is. Yep. Okay, there, there you, go. you go. Thank you, uh, thank you, Corp. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. I remember Deep Impact not being as good as Armageddon. I swear Hollywood does that. Like hey, they Armageddon. come out with two movies the same year and they try to compete with each other and it's the same movie. Armageddon got the worst Aerosmith song. So I think Armageddon I like that wins. That song. Worst Aerosmith song. I like that song. Don't want to miss a thing. Oh, I hate it. I, I love I'm, that I'm song. a big fan of rock and roll Aerosmith, not the late 90s stuff. Oh, but come on. Liv Tyler is hot. Liv Tyler is hot, which is crazy that Steven Tyler could produce something like that, but that in of itself should get him in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if he isn't already in there. For, for putting his hot daughter in Armageddon? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, look at my daughter. She's so hot. And also she's in Lord of the Rings. Oh, baby. <laughs> Crying's a great song. Just saying. Probably my favorite Osmo song, but that and uh, uh, Mama Ken is a good one. Uh, anyways, Shinseki Yori, um, episode 20, I guess. We talked about <laughs> all, all about episode 19. We talked about most of 20 as well. Yeah, well, 20, 20 kind of bleeds team. into it. Yeah, they're kind of like one whole missed. show. You missed one important thing in episode 20. Oh, God. Oh, I fuck. Your, 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 your girlfriend being scarred up. Here we go. She's, she's dead now, right? Listen, Tomiko got hurt. And I got to say, I got to say I'm disappointed that they let that happen. <laughs> However, I'm thinking she got an upgrade. I being fucking broken in, Think in about it. She's, she's got an eye patch now that's cool and die. scars Boo, you stink! she's gonna die see listen yes she'll be she alright looked... <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> I don't think so either she said she pointed right at Sats uh, Saki like All Might did to Deku and said now, it is your turn. Yeah, these are like dying. This is, these are like dying. Um, There's a whole pass of the torch thing. The, the yeah. fiend is coming there. She's passing on her will to Saki. She's already old and injured. The fuck was that? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Please don't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's, lived, she, she's lived a long life, though, see? So no, no, no. Listen, proud. listen. I'll say, I'll say also, also this, when she was laying down in the bed, the artists maybe fucked up a little bit because she looked a, like literally flat. She looked like a 2D plane. It was hilarious. But her head? She's a cartoon! Well, yeah, but you can add dimensions <laughs> and shit like that, but she looked like flat, flat. She looked like... Chest like chalkboard flat drawing. It was really funny, but her head retained the three dimensionality. It was <laughs> it basically just looked like her body was deflated. It was hilarious. It's like, your brain on drugs. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? Listen, I think we gotta get some Tomiko fan art going. Oh, damn it. Also, Why? Also, previous episode, that random girl that stays behind and clearly dies with a crazy lady. Also hot. She is also way too hot. 
way no, too she's hot. there too yeah yeah. yeah yeah she's more than hot she's cold yeah she's at least the body is at the very least lukewarm as of this time <laughs> uh, i don't i don't i didn't mention this but man episode 19 just felt like a horror movie it did it did they were really the production on 19 was really good yeah it literally had all the tropes you could imagine you know going into a house by yourself uh hostages being wrapped up in some weird cocoon like thing uh uh, you know, like Jeepers Creepers or something. And then freaking, uh, you know, a uh, 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 slowly walking uh, fucking entity coming at you, you and you don't ever see its face. That is peak horror movie trope right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even did the whole thing where they're they're all locked in the in the door. Oh then, yeah, <laughs> the doorknob moves a little bit, but before they before they get in there, there's a distraction outside, and they kill the other person. Yeah, yeah, you, you know? just hear the the random lady just going. Oh! <laughs> 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 it would have been it would have been awesome if they played the. I don't think they could afford that. It would have somebody owns that. Whoever owns. Fucking Jason and that shit. They own it. Yeah. I forget what studio does. I don't know if it's like Warner Brothers or whatever, but You Warner Brothers. Yeah, that um Yeah, the first episode uh nineteen was definitely a horror movie. Crazy stuff, and then twenty was just more of the aftermath of everything. So this is gonna be my last question. We saw that they have somebody or a fiend on their team, seemingly Sweeler. So my question is, because Tommy Cole kind of said didn't want to believe that that was even a possible thing because of how thorough the Board of Education is looking into those things and making sure this very situation would never happen. So my question is, how do they win if they can win? Because they were able to kill K in the past, uh, Tomiko, they, they were able to kill that fiend, but they got lucky with that because he just kind of got tired and went to the doctor, and the doctor admit, uh, gave him the poison, and then he died, and then the doctor died as well. Unless they get in another situation like that, I don't think the same luck will befall them. So, how in the world do they even? go up against somebody that they themselves can't kill with their cancer's power. Well, this is anime. It's the power of love. It's, it's the power of love. Bring it in. Bring yeah, it in. yeah, bring, bring it in. Saki's going to look at Maria and go, you don't have to hurt anymore. Just come here. And hug her, and then she's gonna go from being this fiery, oh, I'm a fiend. All right, and I'm then good just, now, Saki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then just turns clear, bright, just lights shooting out of her. <laughs> and it's like, I now understand the world is a better place, and it's gonna be lame, and we're all gonna hate it, and we're all gonna wanna wish that we got our money back for something we didn't pay for. And they're gonna go kiss at the end, but it cuts out right before the kiss. Right, right, right. It, it's like, <laughs> like it's just, the, the lips are coming, and then it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah Finn. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, I don't know how. The only thing I could think of is, I'm out of here, man. Just pack up and fucking leave and move away as far as you can. The world's a big place. I don't know what the rest of the world is, because all we know is this village. We don't know about the whole world. And if we're to believe that this was once Earth a long time ago, there's probably good places somewhere in other parts of the country Tahiti. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll just go to Tahiti or Tijuana and just set up shop there and start a new life. Come on now to Florida. Right, go to Florida where... <laughs> We, where, where we don't got crazy no crazy Kantai users, but we got a lot of crazy ass people. <laughs> we, they're probably going to see like the same type of shit. They go there. A and mutated it's just... crocodile. 
<laughs> yeah, instead of queer rats, it's just going to be half crocodile speaking creatures just going, I love food. <laughs> it's going to look like Gotham. <laughs> oh my god. Gotham. Killer Croc from Gotham or from Batman. <laughs> I will swallow your bones. Alfred, what the fuck was that guy's deal? Sir, I think he wants to swallow your bones. <laughs> Alfred, <laughs> shut the fuck up. That's not very nice of you, sir. Oh, Bruce. <laughs> How you abuse me. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, uh, great, great episodes. Uh, well, I guess if I was was to say like my theory on how they'd do any of this to try and fight back, um, I it would it's gonna have to be like it's gonna have to be like a Gears of War thing, where it's like Ooh. they're gonna have to get like they're gonna go into the heart of the queer rats and and just blow them up. With a with yeah. a with blow a blow up the hive, mm-hmm. yeah, and then the the hot hive lady comes out at the end. Oh, the the queen, she was the queen, <laughs> and then you stab her and you say, "That's for Dom," and everyone you killed, you you what did what did he say? You worthless? No, he didn't say worthless. He said he called her a bitch. I know that, but I forgot what he said. Dom, we're in a worm. Dom, he, what do he we didn't do? Say, he didn't say that as he was stabbing her. <laughs> Dom, Dom, where are you? You know I'm dead. <laughs> Dom, she looks like stop a worm. Trying to, stop trying to find me. I'm not here. I've been telling you I've been dead for years. <laughs> Dom, I hate my ex-wife. Dom. <laughs> Now, if they made that the ending, I'd be like, this game <laughs> fucking sucks. Uh, I cry. I, I, You know, fun fact, I got Gears 5 on sale the other day. It was like $10 with Hive Busters. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm playing that shit. I'm playing it for Hive Busters. I can't wait. N- n- enjoy, enjoy it. That's all I could say is just... Enjoy the wonderfulness that is Gears Five, and I've the promotion Gears 5 for before, Terminator. And I really Terminator liked it. Salvation. Yeah, that was weird. That was really weird. But Hive Busters is apparently like way different. It's like classic Gears. Oh, I don't think I did Hive Busters. Yeah, it's a, it's an expansion pack. It's not like a DLC. It's like an expansion. It's crazy. Huh. Interesting. It's like apparently like straight up just they went back to the classic Gears like one formula. So that's why I'm really... <laughs> they fucked up so bad they had to do it again. I got to. Well, I don't know if they fucked up. I think that game got really good review scores, but anyways. <laughs> Shall we talk about Let's just talk. Right. Free run. We got the we got uh one of the best characters back in the series. The the weird Siri? dopey looking elf. Seri? Serie? Come on, guys. The old man? Oh Dinkin! No, 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 no. no Stark Sensei? Dink- Dink- yes, yes, yes. Oh, 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 right, right. The, the. Well, I taught you everything you need to know. <laughs> I have nothing. I have nothing left more to teach you. <laughs> Walks off. <laughs> I love. I love. Some crazy old man. <laughs> I just love the fact that he says that, but then it's like Stark, like is basically like, yeah, he'll say that again in the future. It's just like it, I love the idea. It continues to go to go. It's like I have nothing left to teach you except for the next time. Is, is, like it just makes me wonder if it's like a fetish of his. Is this just something like he's Blue always balls. wanted to say? <laughs> I, he just I never think, got the opportunity to. I think. Well, maybe it's that, 
I think maybe he's just an old man with dementia and he thinks he's talking to someone he talked to like years ago and he's just like, there's nothing more for me to teach you. Anyone I mean, could be sitting there and he'd say the same thing to them. <laughs> I mean, I want, I'm kind of, I want to test that theory one, one of these days. I want to see if he says that to someone else. <laughs> that would be interesting. But um, yeah, shout out to old man who taught Stark everything he knew. It It's funny because it's like, Stark, if you knew that that man was going to come back every time, why wouldn't you move somewhere else to, like, chill? He, he just loves sitting in that one spot and then just listens to the old man talking, like Grandpa Simpson going, well, things just seem to happen the way they did back in the day. And uh, it, just, it just goes on and on and on. And There's nothing left for me to teach you. <laughs> Maybe that you just want to be nice. You know, make him yes. feel better about himself. Yeah, Stark is is very nice. He is a very nice person. Just uh, you know, who isn't nice? Fern. Fern. Fern thought that Freeman didn't give a fuck. She's just like that fucking bitch. That broke my goddamn staff. Fucking cutter. I I love the staff. I got it from my sensei before he died, and it means so much to me. She wanted to use it for firewood. Then we then to go and we find out that she went and got it fixed. Fern confuses me sometimes. I don't. It's, I don't dislike her, but I don't like her as much as the other characters because these misunderstandings happen so frequently with her specifically, and yeah. it kind of confuses me because, especially with Free Run, because with the whole Star thing, they're doing a whole romantic comedy bit thing between two teens who obviously like each other but won't admit it. But with Freerin, she's known her for a long time. So you would expect her to understand that you know, Freerin has a way of talking where it's not very warm and she's kind of pragmatic in a sense, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't care. But I, I, I could sort of understand her, where she's coming from, though, just because sometimes you just think about yourself in a moment and you're not really. You're not really th- looking at the big picture, especially when you're as emotionally distraught as she was losing or thinking that she lost something that was somewhat of an heirloom. But at the same time, I think she should have had a lot more. Confidence that free run would probably try to help her. Considering this free run. I agree. I agree. I mean, maybe when she was younger and maybe earlier in their relationship, I would understand why she would maybe feel that way. But especially right now, where they are currently, I, you know, she should. I understand free runs kind of a dit sometimes and gets <laughs> followed up by mimics and stuff. But Yamateo. I mean, <laughs> that's who she is. <laughs> But deep down, she she cares. She just expresses it in very different ways. Well, but uh, she, yeah, I agree with that. I think it's she realizes she's out of her depth and she doesn't understand something. But I think she knows that just because she doesn't understand something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist or isn't real. And despite that, tries to do the right thing and take care of the people that she cares about. And... um which is her daughter slash mother, uh, Fern. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I, I thought that was a pretty cool scene when we go to the shop with, uh, with Richter, just like sitting up, setting up shop, being pissed that he didn't get to move on to the, the next stage and whatever. Dinkin! Told him what was was like, hey, you got a lot to look forward to in the next three years. You're gonna be stronger. You're gonna be okay, kid. Don't worry. Kid, you got you, you got balls, kid. I'll give you that. You got a life <laughs> right of you. You you got heart, kid. <laughs> All of that, but uh, then Fern comes in, makes Richter even more pissed. I don't even think she does it intentionally. She was just like. Hey, could you fix this? And Rick is like, no, no, I, I fucking get hate out of my guts, sight. You piece of shit. Hate your guts. Get, get out of my sight. And she's just like, I mean, 
If you can't fucking do it, just say you can't do it. I'll, I'll go to the guy next to, next door. <laughs> you know, it's it's okay. It's like, okay, damn it, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> Never said yeah, I she, would it, pre huh? She she one hundred percent isn't manipulative to say something like that with that intention. It just came out, and he was like, "Wait, who said?" You know, he played on his ego, and then you know he he ended up doing it. Yeah, that was, uh, if this was Dungeons and Dragons, that was a critical success. For sure, on Fryer's yeah, and She rolled a 20. <laughs> for sure, on that. I also want to say shout out to Lawfin, too, because both Dinkin and Lawfin were trying to comfort Richard. I just found it funny. <laughs> you know, Dinkin's trying to comfort him in his own way, kind of like, you know, as men, because he's not just outright saying, hey, man. It's all right. You know, he he's doing it in a very covert way because he initially he says, yeah, I'm here to shop and he doesn't buy anything by the end of it. Yeah, he was, you know, yeah, the whole intent was to put him in the better spirits. But of course, you know, them being men, you can't talk about your feelings and stuff like that outright in the open. But uh, Lawfin, what made me laugh was she just doesn't really know how to comfort them, probably because of the age gap between them. And she's just like, want a donut? (laughs) <laughs> all, it doesn't help she's hopped up on sugar too yeah i don't know like how he goes what is your relationship with dick and like that's not even your not even related it's just like kind of like be, my grandpa basically i want to say he buys me donuts he buys me free shit he's my <laughs> sugar daddy oh my literally <laughs> oh, oh my god i didn't even think of that when i said that <laughs> yeah he gives me sugar, yeah. but not the kind you're thinking. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? Oh, is he a sugar daddy? Yes, holds up bag of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I find it impressive that they, they do this with her, but they, you know, they do it with like a lot of these characters, like Method in in particular, and some other ones where they don't really focus on them too hard, but. They're able to give them characters just in how they basically present themselves and their personalities. Like, Lawfin is memorable because she eats donuts and she says nothing, nothing at all. And she does, she sometimes has really cool fights. That's, 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 she's that's really it. quick. That's all I remember for her. She does the instant transmission. Shoo, shoo. Yeah. yeah. And she like totally stands out. Yet I, I would never want to see a series where Lawfin is the main character. Not even a million years. But she's perfectly placed, you know? So um I, I find I they find de- that impressive. They definitely know what that. they know what characters to focus on. For sure. I mean, yeah. with with how big that cast was for this whole test, you can't focus on all these characters and unless you do a long, long arc. You know what I mean? But um, they focused <laughs> on, they, they they gave the appropriate amount of time for you to feel something for all these characters, or for the characters they wanted you to care for. Like, everybody, I think it's safe to say most people like Dinkin, even though oh, he isn't a part awesome. of the main trash. Yeah, yeah, he's probably my second favorite. He might be my favorite character. More than Ubel? I gotta think about that. I gotta I gotta think about that. Yeah, he's he's really well done. I honestly didn't think I was gonna like him when I first saw him, because when I saw him, I just took him as a throwaway character. He was just gonna be somebody to lose and be a a, a stepping stool for the main cast. But then he, yeah, he became a really good character, especially with the we fight with our fists, <laughs> fight with our fists, and just he's just so wise and just cool as a cucumber, never lets anything get to him. Even when he knows he's going to lose, he's like, well, at least we go out together. Yeah. Oh, yeah and he's like- uh, been the one that maintain these relationships, even though they aren't even on the team, which is pretty cool. Cool of them. Yeah. Pretty yeah, cool. yeah. I, I imagine that's going to come uh, later to, to help him in some way. Uh to just keep that group together. Speaking of the test, it's not quite paper, rock, scissors, but basically it's a look you up and down like a piece of meat and go, no, yes, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, you're talking about uh, <laughs> Sarah? Say- I'm talking about dopey uh, elf face. I, 
I loved when Kane walked in and she just goes, failed, now leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's, she's like, like, don't like your outfit. <laughs> I just I just love how she's like, why? <laughs> and it's like, what did I do? I fucking love Kane because she is so incompetent. But it's not her fault. She's like, she's like Stark, but if Stark, like, truly never won anything and had, like, little upside. Kane is great. Like, uh, in the beginning of the episode, I love how she's trying to comfort Loine. And she, <laughs> she, she gets up to, you know, get closer to get, to get her head pats, right? And Kane is like, what? You want to fight? <laughs> I just... Yeah. Oh man, yeah. she's so yeah, funny. They have, they have a cute little relationship. They but, do. Um, they're think, they're mega gay. Yeah, I think the whole thing with Kane, and even in her not immediately getting mad in that situation when she got immediately felt, because Sarah goes on to say that she already can't see herself as a first class mage, and we know. Uh, what what has been shown to us with magic is is a lot of it or most of it is visual visualization. So if you don't have a big imagination or if you set limits on yourself, that's going to hinder you severely. Especially when we're talking about first class mages, and we got to remember these guys are the top of the top. I forgot what percentage of the population are in this. But I think it's less than 50 first class mages in the world. So these guys are the best of the best. So if you don't have an imagination that's vast and um, you kind of had to almost be somewhat of a psychopath in a sense, you know, where. Uh, where you're like, like Ubel, for example, where she just believes that she can cut anything. You can't be someone like Kane who. Puts limits on us puts limits on herself is somewhat of uh, I want to say a coward but not confident maybe yeah doesn't have as much confidence as some of these other guys so I mean the fact that she immediately failed we I don't think any of us thought that she was going to pass no. we didn't think we didn't know the test was going to be this but I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah I I mean kind of a lackluster test but it was all because of Fryrin. <laughs> Fryrin's the reason why they have to have this lame ass test, but at the same time, I guess I understand the test. That's just and uh, Sasuke, you you got it right. Fryrin oh, did oh, not yeah, become yeah. a mage. Yeah, I mean I we kind of knew that like this, but yeah, and it was because of what she said because she's like, uh, uh, Sari was like. You don't think I'm going to pass you, or you don't want to be a mage, not because of the other reasons they have, but it's because you don't think I'm going to pass you. And she's like, Yeah, yeah, that's right. And she's like, Tell me your favorite spell right now, and <laughs> maybe I might consider it. And she gave the exact same thing, uh, answer that her old master, Flame, uh, gave, which was, you know, planting flowers, and immediately was like, Get out of my sight, you fucking fail, fail, fail. <laughs> And yeah. I just loved kind of like the banter after that where Fern, first of all, was, was even phased, which I love that too about her because she was just like, I'm the strongest. I don't give a fuck because I know in Sari's eyes, she feels as if um, Byron's not good enough, but it's like if she's not good enough and she was strong enough, not just by herself, but with the help of all her friends to defeat the Demon King. I think she's doing okay for herself. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, it, she she has these high expectations for her because w- what we see in the Fryerin is that she she's not out to be a mage to be the strongest or anything like that. She doesn't have any ambition like that. Right. All the power she's acquired because Sire says something of the effect that she is unskilled for her age because she's thousand years old. Mm-hmm. Which it sounds crazy considering how strong she is, but I think the whole reason why she's saying that is because unlike Sere, who is a grimoire with all the spells in the world under her belt, Free Freeren is a person that 
she has a lot of things under her belt too, but it's just it's in the not in the pursuit of those spells, but more so in the just having fun with the adventure. So yeah. she is disappointed because Sarah has these super high expectations for Freerin, considering she's an elf just like her, which means that she has a lot more time and uh of course more knowledge than other regular humans. So high expectations, but Freerin just lives her life and i think that bothers her a lot yeah and even with her liking that one spell that flame like the flower spell i don't know if, if it's because sarah wants something more combat oriented but for free Ren and flame magic wasn't about it wasn't about any destructive thing or um having some power or are covering some power imbalance for demons and humans. It was just about the beauty of magic itself. Just yeah. having fun with magic. And I think that really bothers Sarah and why she has so much friction with uh, Free Ren. And I just loved how basically she explained why she loved flowers itself. It was the connection between her and her, uh, her allies in the battle uh, with the demon king, you know, all her friends and com- compadres were all because of that, because what do you know? Fryron knew uh, Himmel when he was a kid. I swear. She just coasts through life, not remembering <laughs> this man when he was a kid, a doll or an old man, <laughs> but, uh, or not that she doesn't remember, but just like, Oh, yeah, that's him as a kid. Yeah, I, that was a thing. <laughs> but uh, she said that power was the reason why they all became friends, and that was the reason why they were able to defeat the Demon King, which I love that explanation. As you said, was the, it's the power of magic itself. And she still was bitter about it. I was like, you still fucking fail. I don't give a fuck. Get out of my sight. <laughs> I, 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 well, another thing, too. I find it interesting that Sarah says that she has, she's so opposed to Flame and Freerin, and because she shit talked, she shit talked Flame about liking that spell and all this stuff. But did you notice something in the episode with her? She got them with, grippers out. No, with, with wait, with with Sarah wagging yes. that toe. Uh what did I notice? Um. Whipping the toe. Uh, <laughs> now I'm thinking of feet. See, God damn it! Jesus Christ! Of course, everyone else was probably thinking Bring that too. Those away. Okay, Asaski, tell me what exactly uh, was it? She, uh, when they were taking the third test, she's maintaining a big garden. Ah uh, ha ha ha! I didn't even notice that, but you're right. Wow. So that goes to show you as much as she shit talks Flame and Freerun for liking these spells, I mean, either out of obligation to Flame or whatever it may be, she's still maintaining a big garden for, full of flowers. Huh. I didn't even think about that, but you're right. It's, I wonder if she even knows it. You know, it's just like because she's lived so long and doesn't really care for that spell or whatever, but I don't know. I gotta think about that one. <laughs> but we know somebody who did pass. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. And that's another one you got right. Fern. Oh, yeah. I mean, if she didn't pass, I don't I don't that'd have been insane. <laughs> We do all this for her. Yeah. Just, that'd be, that'd be just, crazy. To, just to watch Dinkin get it or just to watch Werbel get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like there's there's always good setup with Free Run because the whole setup for Fern passing this was when uh we saw this this old guy uh learn learning. He ain't learning he was, no more. <laughs> he was supposed to be the third proctor 
But Sere took over, of course. And the whole setup here is that nobody was able to sense Sere's uh, suppressed mana. But he was able, not to sense her suppressed mana, but he was able to sense Freeran's suppressed mana. Which was a crazy feat because another proctor there was like, yeah, no way was Freeman suppressing her aura. Didn't happen. Nope, didn't happen. Look at my yeah. finger. <laughs> yeah, so it was just showing you, I guess, I don't know if it's experience or just uh, attention to detail that will let you on or something. I- I'm going to say it's more like a experience dealing with someone powerful. He was able to tell Freeman was suppressing her mana, but he wasn't able to tell about uh, Sari suppressing her mana. But Fern not only can tell that Freeman is suppressing her mana, but Sari, who we know has way more aura. Because uh, Lernan said that Sari and Freeman were matched evenly, but the only reason he, he thinks that is because he can't sense the vastness of Sari's mana which is even crazier. So the fact that Fern was able to sense uh, Sarah's mana shows you how exponential she is, that she has basically the same amount of attention to detail when it comes to mana as this old guy uh, learning who they said that he's the first of the first class mages. Yeah, that's that is indeed a crazy little flower right there. I did feel bad for learning though. Freaking Sarah talking all that shit is about it. And it's <laughs> like, you're an old man now. And you're you're old. I You'll never still be. Still couldn't friend. get you to, to be great. <laughs> Basically, just talking all that shit, saying humans. She, I think she hates humans. I, she has a thing against humans. I think Sarah is very intrigued by humans. I think Sarah just it's, it's like a god complex. It's like a god complex. It. They could them they could like humans, to somebody. They're goddamn Sony Walkmans and they're David Bowie. What? <laughs> uh, wait. There's we missed a lot of the chat. Hold on. They're goddamn somebody, reproductive organs. Oh, Some of these chats are bad. Uh, One Piece last will always be memorable. Deep impact or no? The episode did give me horror vibes, which was really good. Third test was subject to change. Dickens just left without buying anything and leaving items on the counter. <laughs> Any theories of who will fail the third test in the next episode? I'll, I'll get to that. Um, they didn't show if you, uh, Ubel or Dickin passed or failed. Sasuke was right. So did Freeman groom Himmo? <laughs> no. <laughs> she didn't even, even remember that she met him. Right, she doesn't know who he is. Imagine he got that on that. one knee imagine, and proposed, and was like, "Oh, that's a thing." Imagine Freeran groomed Himmel, and Himmel, through Stockholm syndrome, fell in love with her. Oh my she, god! She doesn't even know how to groom anybody. Twist. Yeah, she probably doesn't. She probably doesn't know what right. that even means. She just she just assuming like grooming. You mean like with a dog? You know, take it to the vet and my. My luscious twin tails? You're her, taking care her, of those? I, her <laughs> idea of being seductive is the blowing kiss thing. <laughs> the kiss attack. <laughs> that was a great thing. Freaking, it knocked Himmel off his fucking feet. Yeah. But when it, but when it came to... Just seeing what it did to Adora Burb. Sign? It was just... Yeah, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> It kicks yeah. Sina out of the party because of how well it did not work. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he left. Yeah, it, it had nothing to do with him trying to find his friend. He's you like, know, guys, I've been trying to find a way to say this, but that kiss you gave me the other day, Fryman, was really disgusting. I'm going to leave now. You know, Bye. I said I liked older women, but you made me reconsider everything about my entire <laughs> you, life you, you are the definition of way past their prime i don't want to be here anymore <laughs> um oh my god you know i think it's funny that sign isn't around right as method shows up 
which is oh my god his type. He'd, he'd be in he'd be in heaven you kidding is, me is she older though i no, think she's, she's a little in, older she's just more i feel mature. like she's in yeah, well, yeah, I feel like, well, okay. She's 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 not decrepit or anything, but she's she's older. I think she's mature. Because I think up. I think she's definitely older than, or sign is uh, definitely older than her. If I had to guess her age, I would guess she's like twenty four. I'm gonna like say that. I'm gonna say thirty two. Uh, we don't know her age. All right, she's thirty two. I win. <laughs> I feel like she would be younger than Richard, and Richard seems like he's in his thirties. Yeah, Richard does seem older. Yeah, he does. I'm really just taking guesses, but we don't. I, know. I love this. Yeah, appearance. Method is a tall young woman of well proportioned figure. <laughs> Very nice. Signs type. <laughs> yeah, freaking. But now all that's left is. As you say here, Satsuki. Method, Lan, Ubel, Werbel, and Dinkin. And if they'll pass or not. I'm pretty sure, the because this is the last episode. This last episode is going to be determining if all these people pass or not. Well, we got to talk about the people who fail first. Oh, who cares? They're nobodies. <laughs> yeah, they're... Well, Donut Girl, Baldy, uh, Mushroom Head. Yeah. Wait, Baldy <laughs> didn't even make it. Oh, that's right. I keep. It was big mustache guy. Big mustache guy, mushroom girl, uh, donut girl, and donut demon. Donut demon. I, I don't know. <laughs> there was a couple of people actually Indeed. not good. They, like they were so unimportant that it was just in sequence. Fail, 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 fail. <laughs> yeah, it was, fail. It, was, it was kind of like, did you get more than ten minutes of screen time? All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's essentially what it was. It was just like, uh, your 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 time is up. You know, bye. You who said two words this whole series. You know they should so... do like a meme edit of uh, who who's the guy from like uh, American Idol? The who who is that? Oh, guy? Simon Cowell. Yeah, they use Simon Cowell to be like, no, horrible, disgusting. Uh. That was the worst performance I've <laughs> seen in my life. If I could describe it in one word, it would be getting repeatedly beat in my face over and over again, and then vomiting right into my forehead. Just absolute disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You should think I don't about know killing who, yourself right here, right now. Here, I'll I don't give know you my who. Sword. Look, I have a gun. It's loaded. Go backstage. <laughs> you know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a twelve-year-old kid. That's that's the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh. it, it, it pans to free run, and she's doing the thing. Yeah, yeah, the the the. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Fern, she would be pouting. Oh yeah, yeah, Fern. Just... Oh, <laughs> uh, so six people failed. Kane, Dunstay, Dunstay, Lawfin. I don't know how to say this name. It's like scarf. I'm just going scarf. Yeah, bundles up for the winter. Uh, A Ray and then Free Run. So, yeah, six people failed. Fern passed. So, five more people left to determine whether they're going to fail or pass, yeah. which is uh, Methode, Lan, Ubel, Werbel, and Dinkin. So, we got the question. I think, I think Carp asked the question uh, who will fail the third test in the next episode? Honestly, I think most, if not all, these people will pass. Um, because we said we said the number we thought we're going to pass were like six, right? I said three, and I, I'm oh. a, I'm a third I'm a third of the way right. I got Fern, and then I said Ubel and Dinkin. Okay, but so I, I I said six then. Yeah, yeah, you said six. So this way, I I think two because of the structure of how this happened, where it was like fail, 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 fail pass. I think 
I think we're going to see pass, 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 pass now. And then maybe we'll get reasons as to why they pass. But um, I think the only one I'm kind of shaky about them passing is maybe land. But mm-hmm. I think everybody else uh, is going to pass this for they sure. They got to give it to Dinkin. If, if, if she crushes his heart, I'm going to come gonna through the computer. St- yeah. We're going to beat You're up Siri. You're going to fight a magical elf that could annihilate the entire world? With a dopey face. Yes, you are <laughs> right. Why not? She's going to be so caught off guard that she'll lose. <laughs> I mean, she's never been punched in the face. Right, right. She's probably just been like she's lived for so long sitting in her ah, EA, chair. You didn't give me a month to train to reach my full potential. <laughs> so, sorry, but you know when you say no to Dinkin, you get the elbows. Uh, I, yeah, I'll say I'll, I'll make a definitive statement. I think all of them are going to pass. Wow. I think I think they all. Like I say, I feel too because of the structure of it, where we went fail, 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 pass, and I think it's going to be more passes. I think okay. Ubel will pass just because of what she said about visualization and yeah, and her ability. If she doesn't pass, then I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh you 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 gonna you gonna put on the hat and say. We coming for you, Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm coming for God. you! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> uh, I think he did an interview like recently where he was talking about that and he was like, man, I thought I was going to get fired. And I was freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, that's why he did what he did. After he said it, he just literally just went <clears throat> and turned <laughs> turned away. It's like that. Uh, remember that Callisto interview where he was like, uh, he was interviewed. He's like, so what are you gonna do on SmackDown now? And he's like, uh, well, you know, uh, oh, here on SmackDown, Land of Opportunity, it's uh, I'm gonna be, a, uh, I'm gonna do a. Uh, uh, uh a, a, good, uh, a good a good a good lucha thing <laughs> yeah yeah that was he, that was literally his off, whole conversation and i love how he walks off and he yells god damn it and you could hear <laughs> he was so he was so pissed <laughs> off because he blew whatever he was trying to say and he knew it oh man uh light roller Wait, says but... here's a question what if yubel gets the same offer as fern would she take it to train under her i don't think so no She's a, she's not even a type to. We already know what Ubel's whole thing is. She learns by feel more so than actually studying books and stuff like that. She wouldn't even. First and foremost, I don't even think Sabre would want to take her as a student. She doesn't have that. That's not the type of person she would want to train. No, no, she'd be terrified of her. I mean, she probably like. She probably smokes weed. Probably Who? smells. Yubel. She put, look, I mean, look at the color of her hair. It's green. Oh, that's, first of all, that's stereotyping. A stereotype. I want to say that's a stereotype. You cannot judge just because Wait, of that. Uh, hold on. Hold on we hold did on. recently ha- listen. We recently had St. Patrick's Day. She could be very Celtic and just be very into her Irish roots. No, no. She smoked She's so healthy. much weed, her hair turned green. And I'll give you proof. <laughs> Remember in Demon Slayer when Mitsuri oh ate all Fuck of those. All the all that all that uh, soccer emoji and her hair turned pink and, and yellow. That's not weed, see. But okay, yeah, yeah, but then yeah. there's a Nitsu. There's a Nitsu whose hair changed color because he got struck by lightning. So right? maybe Ubel got I don't know. She got know, she, she got, got smoke. by the weed. She devil. got pot planted. <laughs> yeah. She she could have fucking been born in the ground and got uprooted for all she, we she, know. She, she smoked some AK forty seven and was like, "What the fuck is this?" She she was on that cereal milk. She didn't want to go off it. Are you quoting that guy that you keep sending me? See, <laughs> tracking the about fuck. how you are him and that you'll always be him. I'm him. I will continue to be him. It's so stupid. No, wait, wait. It was, I'm, I'm, it was. It was. I'm him. I've been him. I will continue to be him. When. So when C Tactics finally reveals himself to the world, 
He's going to cosplay as that guy. I'll be Dracula Flow. Yep, he's going to be Dracula Flow, and I cannot wait to see it. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be lovely. I agree. Yeah. Who do you so, think is going to make it, see? Uh, I think Yubel for sure. I think Metho, definitely. I just can't see her not passing. She's kind of got the same thing going on with Yubel, where it's like she's just so confident and, and just so knowledgeable, and you can clearly tell, and her boobs smell good. Uh, and oh, uh, I think Denkin yep. for sure. It's the only reason. However, I will say uh, Denkin, uh, well, I said for sure. Let me, let me reward that. I think it's like 50 50 with Denkin. Uh, I don't think it's completely possible that he'll pass, but I do think uh, there is a good percentage that he will at the same time. I just don't think it's, uh, you know, I think, I think it's a little up in the air. Um, like the only way they don't pass him is, is, is if they want to be cruel. Yeah. yeah. If they wanted like some shock value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they pull a fucking uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and they just decided to, you know. <laughs> They groom him? He, he, May May no. grooms Dinkin? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about the author deciding to just go ahead, take the story, you know, build this character up, make you like them, then all of a sudden, boom, they don't get it. They, they don't get to become first-class mage. That's just, he, he, he's old. If he doesn't pass, he's going to have to wait three years. The uh, Richard already made fun of him by saying you might not even make it three years for all we know. <laughs> uh, we saw how experienced he is. Is he the strongest person? No, but I mean, he I think he's stronger than a lot of other people who may pass this if we're to go like uh, Methold and uh, Werbel. If, if those guys pass, if he doesn't pass, that's going to look very strange to me. So I feel like the only way he wouldn't pass if they wanted to be cruel or something. What yeah. did they what what did they say that like here yeah, too old? Oh my god! I mean, now that I think about it, the, Sarah did kind of mention that by calling Mister Lernan old. So what if she takes it out of her own textbook and just say to to Dinkin, "Yeah, I said this to Lernan. You're too old, man." Like I said, we're we're, we're jumping through the screen. Tat team attack. Yep. I I'll I'll do some pounding and then uh you know you wanna be tagged in, reach over, tag, then you, and then we'll do some <laughs> we'll do some moves together. Maybe the three D through a table or something. Yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. Bitch gotta learn. <laughs> you don't fuck with Dinkin. <laughs> Now we got 12 uh, people in here? What happened? Yeah, 12. Thir- I saw 13 at one point. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for stopping in. Yeah, much Subscribe if you it. haven't. Definitely. Uh, or if you're not new, then uh, drop a like. Uh, I was thinking about this. Too. You know, I should probably be a better host and, like, actually do call to actions. I mean, I think it's been like what five years and we've barely done any of those. So yeah, drop a like we've went five years without, you know, badgering you. Let's let's start badgering you guys. Yes. Let's put you guys to work. Let's break it down. Come on. Here we go. Everyone right now, go down, hit that like button. And if you've already hit it, you don't got to hit it. Instead, because <laughs> if you do that, it's going to take it away. <laughs> Go ahead and smash that like button for us. Yeah. And if if you, you enjoy the video. I also heard threats work, too. So if you don't, I'll come find you. <laughs> and we, we don't, we don't, we, you, you don't, don't want to know what we're going to do. You, you don't want C to come find you. He yeah. found me and I, I, I was impressed. I was like, damn, how'd you really? Yeah, I thought you were reason- in Tennessee. There's a reason why we don't say EA from the waist down. I'll just say that. Shit. Pretty. It's not pretty, man. It's, it's not pretty. I, 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 had to, I had to take the legs. I had to take them. <laughs> when they say sweep the legs, 
See does more than sweep them. He sweeps them clean off. I gank them legs. He he ganks them like a gift <laughs> Yankee. <laughs> uh, Blazel, best girl. Besides all the other best girls. I mean, they're all pretty best girl. Carlac for me, though. And I... Minthara. Minthara? Yeah, oh, okay. We're treading down a dangerous path. <laughs> Saucy would love Minthara. Yeah, you know, Baldur's Gate is basically just a dating sim and a tactical... Well, it's basically like, like Fire Emblem, so maybe Sasuke would like it. I don't know. I just, I've, I just played Fire Emblem yesterday, too. I finally got to a different route. I'm playing... Uh, what, what is it called? The crim, Crimson... Is it Crimson Flower? The, the Crimson... The Crimson Butt Faces? It's the it's the original. Well, I won't say original. I was in the middle of drinking. <laughs> it's the it's the Black Eagles Adagar thing where you're not actually going to try to kill her. Oh, that yeah yeah. Uh, I think I'm currently on a playthrough of that, uh, but I haven't played in like a year now. <laughs> I killed her first. Like that was the first route I went to it, and Ellie was like, you know, like that's the least that's. The, <laughs> That's the route everybody does last. And I was like, oh. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to be different. I, no, for whatever reason, I always find myself getting to bad endings, no matter what I do. It happened in Silent Hill 2. I finished Silent Hill 2, and my character ended up killing themselves. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a Jesus. gaming. That's, that's what they designed them to be. They designed you to get that oh. bad ending first, so you'll go back and replay it with better mechanics and yeah, more learned I, I, on it. I, I think that's true too, especially when it comes to those games where every move you determines the outcome of in the ending of the game. Yeah, I find myself going back to those a lot because let's just say the first time I played Baldur's Gate, I did not like it, and then I finally got the ending I wanted. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, any other thoughts on for 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 real? we're almost done with the show. One more freaking episode. I don't want it to end. I'm reading the manga. I'm just I, that's how much I don't want it to end. Oh, you know they're gonna confirm it for a second season. Oh, they got it. They mad they, absolutely. Like, people are all like, "Oh, Madhouse is gonna break the curse." I'm like, you guys pay too much attention to memes. The real the real life don't work that way. This is getting a season two. It's gonna be by Madhouse, and there's no way it's not. Well, I'm betting, and also break the I'm curse. They've money. made season twos of shows, haven't they? They have for decades. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So, I mean, Jesus Christ, Urusei Yatsura, one of them. But, uh, I'm I'm betting good money. I will bet twenty doll hairs right now. <laughs> I'll put it down on the table, bitch. <laughs> This is getting a season two. It'll be by Madhouse. And. 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 It'll be out at the end of 2025. The end of 2025? No. I'm not, not four? <laughs> no, I'm joking on that. <laughs> that's, that's way too early. Um, 2025 is not early. No, Especially they, the end of 2025. They don't, they don't have enough chapters. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they're, they're, they they covered eight volumes. They couldn't make a season, season two? Yeah, well, they covered eight volumes, and there's 11 out right now. Oh. Or, so, oh, yeah, they 12, definitely couldn't make like a season two then. There may be 13 oh, well. if you're reading it week to week. 13 or 14. Well, they could maybe make a season two and do like 12 or 13 episodes and not do 27. And maybe I, not have them release all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think with the way Madhouse produced this season, they're definitely because they got their shit together big time. Uh, I I think they're. I haven't heard anything from you know any of their committee or anything like that or the people working there. I haven't read anything about this yet, but uh, it really does seem like they're doing the Kyoani strategy where they're trying to become more self sufficient. Uh, to some degree. Uh, so if that's the case, I, I think they they may do another thing where they produce pre-written 
uh, before it even releases. And if that's the case, I could see them waiting because chapters are weekly for this, I believe. So, um, oh, it may be, that. you know, they may start production in twenty at the end of twenty twenty five, um, and they'll probably have enough by then. Um, that's that's what that's that's just that's my best estimate, and I think it'll be prob. I I would say it would have to be as long as season one, just because. And- who who does Fryrin? It's the same mangaka that did some famous one. Oh, let me see. Uh, or yeah. okay, I for some I'm getting mine confused, and I I could have swore one of you said like this person also did this one. I, I'm probably like I said, I'm probably getting them confused. Uh, the art is by uh, Sukasa Abe. The story is by Yamada or Kanehito Yamada. Oh, uh, I was about to see. She... <laughs> from one from from one punch man. <laughs> she did You skate Marada. She did uh a couple stories before Free Run. She did uh Lonely Professor and Robot Girls Despair Like Utopia. <laughs> okay, so this means. is this this is basically their 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 best series. Got it. <laughs> okay. And there's another one uh that's called Who in the World is the Namelessness? Which almost sound doesn't like even have where, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? That's what it sounded like. Um, yeah, this, yeah, they, these, they, the art style looks very much like Friren. Um, okay. According to Carp, uh, season two will be a lot better than this season. Somehow it gets even better. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to read it, start reading it soon. Like literally tonight, so because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a video that's gonna release on the same day the final episode comes out. I'm not gonna say what, but if you've seen my AOT stuff, you'll know. I'm doing my goddamn research. Goddamn it! All right. Uh, outside of that, I guess we should go ahead. And get into our final section of the show. Viewer questions. Viewer, 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 viewer questions. questions. We got two questions this week. We had like two last week, so <gasps> two. Just, just a reminder. There's a description, a Google form. You go, you click on it, you submit your questions there. Um, and you ask, I don't care how much you ask, you can ask us multiple choice questions about Marvel. Okay. And Please, we, we no, don't, don't no. put that out there we, again. We've done we it so care. much. You can ask us questions do. About, about, about Aqua and her bodily fluids being purified. I don't, we don't You give know, we a have 13 shit. people watching. Please send us regular fucking anime questions. <laughs> You can send us a question about Joe Biden and Trump and the election and, and, and uh, where you think the country's Don't send us that. Headed. Let's not get political, please. If, if you wouldn't ask your mom the question, don't ask us it. And right. you know what? Get your mom to if ask you, us questions. That's exactly it. it. Just give, get your mom to ask C a question because he's into MILFs. I'm not touching that. He wants to be new daddies. To everybody. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Speaking of his pole. <laughs> uh, first question, penultimate question. We only got two. Would Stark be able to pull out the hero sword? Now, what is the hero sword exactly? Are we talking about Exocalibur? The one in the cave. The oh. one in the cave that Hema was, wasn't able to pull. Oh, oh. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, is there something special that you have to be chosen to be pull it out, or is it strength? Um, I don't know. I mean, would I would assume it's like Excalibur, you have to be chosen or something. Yeah. Well, I feel start, like, maybe I, not now, but when he's older. I feel like that's not important if he think, matures a certain I, way. I would say no because I just feel like those type of accolades aren't important for what we've seen thus far in a series. Just with Freeman specifically, she doesn't need to be a first class mage to be validated as such. 
Now Fern has it, but that's because it that's a plot reason for why they need it to get uh to get to continue their journey. Um yeah, I think a reoccurring theme in a series is that you don't you kind of kind of can validate your yourself and strength doesn't necessarily mean that um that, that you're strong in a sense. And I think the hero sword is a validation of uh, you're, you're strong, but uh Hamilton pull it was still able to beat the Demi King. And also too, I think it's just it wouldn't make sense for him to have that sword considering he has the axe, which is the same weapon that his master uses. I don't see him switching. There you go. There you go. Uh, next question. Last question. Which anime character would be a great wrestler? They can't use magic slash powers, just athleticism and charisma. Kind of like Yamai would be a great heel. Actually... You know she would, she would be a great heel, actually. She would. I mean, to be to be one hundred percent honest, she'd be a great heel. Terrible wrestler, great heel. I could see her as like a manager. Yeah, a manager on the side, like maybe slipping in some knucks or or a chair and sliding it in and just going, "What? I didn't do anything." Boo! You know, just being a complete heel manager. She'd be perfect for that. Um. Oh God. Well, I'm gonna do this as a man wrestler to woman wrestler. For me, when it comes to the male, Levi Ackerman would be amazing in the cruiserweight. He would absolutely tear up. You know, just doing flips and shit, just bouncing back and forth. I mean, he's a short guy, so he would do all kinds of cool stuff. He would be perfect. And this is, of course. You know, when he had all of his body parts and stuff, you know, <laughs> that he would be good at wrestling and uh, Sasuke. Here, here, but here's the thing, though, because they oh. said charisma and wait, what did, what did it say? What was the question? It said charisma physical, physical strength, athletic. right? So, like, he, he'd be athletic. No, it's not what, what I'm trying to go, get at is that they're, I think they're asking not only their ability to wrestle, but also how well they would be able to entertain. You know what I mean? Levi isn't like a god. I think I he think could he entertain. Would, I've, he needs a few I, he needs he a few years under ass. his belt. He'd be a, yeah, mean, he, he'd be a yeah, there, there, charismatic guy. There are mm-hmm. some deadpan individuals like that, but they also have their gimmicks too. I feel like Levi's gonna be like he's gonna wear like a white t shirt and be like, oh let's let's do it. That could be his thing though. He's the I don't care. I come out and he wrestle could be, guy. Uh, Steve Blackman, because that's what, what Steve that Blackman is. did. Steve Blackman, uh, he he was uh, in the Attitude Era. He was like he, he even faced The Rock for the WWE title at one point. And oh wow, uh, he's he's fucking that. awesome. Steve Blackman is awesome. Uh, but he had no charisma. But his charisma came through his legitimacism. Like he he was like a legit fighter. Uh, he wrestled mm-hmm. in MMA, MMA uh, later on in mixed martial arts and stuff. Um, so he was legit, and that was that's what made people love him. He was a fan favorite in the Attitude Era. He was getting crazy pops back then. So all right, well that's that's one. And for the women's division, Sasuke, who? What's the girl's name from Doro Hidoro? That's big and strong and buff. Noi. Her. She'd be perfect. She's got the look. She's got, you know, you know, she doesn't have to have the full on mask because uh, uh, hell, you know what? That could be her thing. That's her answer. She comes out wearing, you know, that suit, wears the mask, whatever, takes off the mask, this beautiful, long, luscious hair and just, just everything. People are just, whoa, who is this? Oh, my God. And then she just takes down the whole women's division with her strength and yeah, she just looks like she could wrestle and take people down. I'm gonna I definitely pick, agree with that. I'm going to pick uh, All Might from MHA. Uh, <laughs> of course. He's perfect. He's literally, he's, he's like basically John Cena. Literally. Or Hogan. Or Hogan. He's more Hogan, I think. But yeah, uh, he's, he would be so great uh, just because... 
he has all the catchphrases. I mean, he already basically is a fucking larger than life figure in society. Um, and but, some people hate him. Some people love him. So, you know, and like he has the whole storyline of like retirement too. So it's like he's got that Terry Funk thing going on. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, All Might see. would be a great wrestler. I think the question, because it says right here, because the stipulation says they can't use magic slash powers, just athleticism and charisma. So he would just be, he'd be punched and he would just vomit blood. <laughs> you, <laughs> so so you, you're you talking about the weak version of All Might? <laughs> well, I guess if he can't use magic or powers, you can't muscle up. Uh, well, and, well, if that's the case... Uh, well, f- you know, fuck it. I mean, Deku. Deku's the next best thing. So, he's, or uh, he Nana. He has powers. <laughs> oh, God. I keep for... Yeah, they all have powers, don't they? I'm an idiot. Fucking shit. That's uh, why... I... <laughs> 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 I'm, st- <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I'm not... I'm not well. Um... <laughs> Come back to you? Uh, no. Um... Listen, I'm going to cheat and say All Might, and uh, for a female wrestler, uh, this is kind of like a, a Hail Mary, but I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, awesome Itaka from Chainsaw Man. Uh, and the only reason is I, I think she would be more of a manager, uh, but she would sort of eat it up, and I can't really say why, but uh, there are some tendencies of her character that would make her fit in into the atmosphere. Maybe not as a wrestler, but at least as a manager. So where I'm going. All right. For me, if we're doing males, I'll go with uh Ishkandar from Fate Rider. Ooh, that's a good one too. Yeah. Super strong guy. Um kind of an an, an entertainer in his own right. Plays plays to the people, the heroes champion. I think it works very well for him. Uh, as for the women, this is kind of tough for me. Uh, I had, I, who, who did I think in my head? I thought it's oh, uh, I don't know why, but I feel like Nobara would like doing something like that. Ooh, he's already somewhat of a tomboy. Um. But at the same time, she like she cares about her beauty. I th- I feel like she would just be really good entertainment wise. Like she would be good on the mic, and um, she already inherently strong. So she she be a heel that everyone kind of like they hate, but they kind of love though. They love they love her. Yeah, as she does that smirk of hers that she always does the little the <laughs> yeah lip. yeah the curl yeah exactly. I could see her just and doing the whole huh what you know just like ah. doing 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 the thing with the ears and everything just like and then just doing the, <laughs> at the end. oh yeah I, I could oh see God, that yeah, too. She'd be great, be amazing. That's, that's she does really, this really and it pitch. turns around and then body slams somebody. <laughs> Oh, I mean, really, like any JJK JJK character uh, can be a wrestler. I think total, decently. especially. Oh, yeah, he'd be pretty good too. Yeah. Um. Well. Uh, see in the comments here. Uh, Freeran in the WWE, please. <laughs> <laughs> what would she even do? She just sit there and make that that face the whole time. She, she go into the ring and be like, "Hogan, kill yourself." Oh my god! <laughs> and Hogan it. just goes, "Brother, oh!" <laughs> and you know what? That'd be that'd be that'd be okay. That'd be all right. Uh. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if any character in Free Run would work in wrestling. I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Is there any character that has like a lot of showmanship? Yeah. Oh yeah, Mushroom Head. She's totally sign. Oh no, not sign. Um, Craft. Oh yeah, Craft would be good actually. He's not afraid to get shirtless and you know 
kind of like peruse around and yeah, he he would be built for wrestling, I think. What about One Punch Man guy? Oh, Punch Baldy? Guy. He's talking about Baldy. Yeah. Oh. Ba- Baldy would just top everybody. He'd be the <laughs> known as the best anime wrestler to ever live. What about oh oh? Ube remember? would be like some crazy sneaky fighter. What what? I mean, she would sneak a little. And he's like, oh no, who's that from behind? She gives him in a submission mode. It's Ubel. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Ubel would be an assassin. <laughs> yeah, she she just come up behind people and kill them. And go, oops, I did it too hard. She, she, no, she would. Her ability would work too in the wrestling ring. Well, the, the thought behind it, where if like, if she can believe it, it's, it's, she can do it. So she would, so in wrestling terms, that would be like she would kick out of everything. Yeah. And you'd have out to like of every finisher. Or something. Yeah. And the only way be to beat her flyer. is by, by a submission. <laughs> she would be a high flyer. And she's going to the top turnbuckle. Here comes the Ubel Shubo shock and jock. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the Ubel U- 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 El- Elbow. <laughs> the Ubel Elbow. The Ubel Elbow. The Ubel Flying Elbow. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> Uh, Carpos says, or Foxy the Silver Fox. Who's that? Uh, One Piece character. Uh, oh. y- yeah, you know, like any character in Long Ring, Long Land, what did I just say? Long Ring, Long Land would be great. Because Ooh, long Rand. Circus, so, circus and wrestling are basically the same thing. Pretty much. If you can, you know, do that charisma and talk and gyrate and everything, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Uh, just don't do an old day gimmick. Don't do that. Bad. Um, EA. Yes, I have sir. A, I have a question for you. If if it's about what I think it's about, I'm already taken. Well, no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where can they find you? Well, you can find me over at my channel, Everything Animated. It currently rests at 557 subscribers. Let me double check here really quick as I have myself here. Uh, oh, my. I'm not even close. It's 587. <laughs> so uh, I'm close to 600, y'all. I think I'm getting a lot of subscribers because of the... Of the... Well... Let's just say the shorts that I've been putting on my channel. Good stuff. You've been, you've been uploading pictures of your shorts? No. <laughs> I mean, that might be it, but <laughs> these shorts have to do with Sting doing the freaking, you know, jumping off the freaking rails and then like crashing into three or four people. 65 years old, man, he's going to die. But he recently retired, so God bless him. Uh, Anyway, um, working on some stuff. Going to try to do something for Kira Toriyama, which I would love to do. It would be an absolute honor to make a video like that. Um, as I have y'all here, we have a little something for if you're not subscribed or not following yet. We got a, uh, a Twitter, King of Anime Pod. You know whenever we go live because I'm in control of it. It tells us all y'all what we're going to be talking about and all that grand stuff and whatnot. We also have right here a Patreon. Yes, that's right, folks and ladies and gentlemen. We have a Patreon. This Patreon has a couple of things that we talk exclusively on on our Patreon and not at all on any YouTubes or anything like that. We did one about gaming. We did one about... uh, uh, Madoka Magic, uh, the movie Rebellion. We did one about uh, me and Sasuke's adventures of of Drunken Land. You know that was a fun one that we talked about. We uh, Kinks will come soon, and also uh, <laughs> uh, our Whips and Chains podcast too. 
Most definitely. That's Whips most... and Chains podcast? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it's totally legit. We all agreed to it. And uh, uh, Sasuke and uh, C, be sure to bring your uh, gimp outfit. You know, the one from Pulp Fiction where you're just all in leather and, you know, tied around. Oh, the 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 my, my bedazzled one with the cod piece? Yeah, yeah. that very same one. I'm glad see, we're on the same mind length and yeah. everything. So The one that so, says yeah. slut on the back, right? Yes, yes, and all the diamond studded all all across the back, and then just a little gaping hole with with <laughs> in the rear. So <laughs> we'll we'll, uh, we'll be talking about <laughs> Sasuke may have ripped a new one, literally. But uh, it, we'll uh, we'll be talking about stuff on the uh, the Patreon. Uh, follow me on all those different spots. My YouTube, the uh, not Twitch. Twitter and the Patreon. I do have a Twitch if y'all are interested in that. I do need to get back on that. It's been far too long. I need to fin- I need to finish Dog and Rampa. Dang it. I need to do it. I just been so fucking busy and been doing stuff. Uh maybe this weekend. Maybe quite possibly this weekend. And C Tactics has a Discord where I play Borderlands with him. We're buddies. We're pals. Yeah. When we're not talking about whips and chains, you know, we we play Borderlands together. So yeah, every Saturday, so far. Mm-hmm. So far, unless there's like a day where I'm just like, you know what? I'm all hopped up on drugs. Let's fucking do this. Let's play Borderlands. And then she's like, I'm not even awake yet. I don't give a fuck. Get on light. It's okay for you. <laughs> <laughs> so all that stuff. Is click, share, subscribe. Love you. Peace out. Woo. Sasuke. <clears throat> As for myself, you can find me, Sasuke the Savage, YouTube channel, Sasuke the Savage. That's with a DA, not a T H E, on my Twitch, where I stream every Saturday and Sunday about now, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Play a, a variety of different games. Fire Emblem, Three Houses right now. Uh, Raging Loop is another one of the games. Your Turn to Die is another one of them. Danga Rampa Ultra Despair Girls. Yes, I'm playing that game because I played the other three games of, in the franchise. And uh, some other games come in. Eventually, I'm going to play Persona 3 to remake. Kind of letting that sit so I could, so other people can finish it or whatever if they're playing it for the first time. Probably going to play it sometime in May. But um, yeah, those those are the channels you can find me. Uh, like EA said, uh, follow us, our Twitter, our Patreon, gotta have something uh, for this month before the month ends, but it'll, it'll, it'll be something interesting for sure. Um, we have a lot more freedom with that. So, uh, what topic is going to be next? Who knows? Uh, but we got some ideas of your, as you already heard, but, uh, that's about it for me. Well, also, it's only a dollar, if I haven't mentioned that before. Only one dollar. Yeah. yeah. And worth you it. You can't buy anything else for a dollar. So you might as nope. well buy this. Not even a new cod piece. No, those surely don't cost a dollar. I wish they did. Um, especially the bedazzled ones. Um, also, the snakeskin ones. Um, as for me, uh, this week, going to have uh, a lot of videos on the main channel, believe it or not. Uh, a couple on Friday, I think one on Saturday, so it's going to be kind of stacked uh, for that. Uh, but tomorrow, I'm going to have a video on Chainsaw Man 159. Uh, it, it, I just, I all of my hopes and dreams, they're coming true. Uh, Chainsaw Man uh, just uh, is the only thing in life anymore that brings me any sort of joy and happiness. Uh, which is ironic because the story is not so happy, but it's great and it's fun. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be pretty much it for this week. I think, uh, I think finally next week is when the MHA video is coming out. So that'll be next week. But, uh, yeah, this week, lot of, lots of stuff to look forward to if you, if you care. Uh, but other than that, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, 
See you all next week. Bye-bye. Later. <laughs>